Hello and welcome back to the Forza 92 podcast for our first episode of Championship Roundup. And very, very pleased to announce making his debut on the podcast. Well, not his debut on the podcast, but as a host. Uh, Luke, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. I'm, I'm, it's been a pleasure to be uh, to be announced to make my uh, my debut. Um, but yeah, I'm. I'd like to say I'm looking forward to it, but I, I'm. I would like the uh, QPR performances to pick up a little bit more before I can say that truthfully. Um, but <laughs> looking forward to ch- talking Championship football anyway. Yeah, it's not. I mean, I, I was saying this with you in on the the episode we released on on Tuesday that like it's nice to actually just be able to talk championship or like i mean i want to try and incorporate some more of league one and league two if we can as well like where we can but obviously today it's going to be mostly championship based but there's going to be some league one or two mentioned because we're going to talk about the carabao cup we're going to talk a little bit about like just leicester and coventry's performances at the weekend probably i imagine luke wants to talk more about (laughs) leicester and coventry's performance (laughs) rather than qprs um and then obviously just luke hasn't put his predictions on air i have some of the other lads have. Ewan hasn't either yet. Um, so I want to see what Luke's general consensus is for the the just the the important things, not necessarily the table as a whole. And then just talking about the upcoming fixtures for this weekend. I think that's just a, a nice, nice, concise episode we're hoping for uh, today. Um, however, should announce. I've, I mean, Luke sounds like he's had quite an exciting day. You're in the process of buying your first house, right? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, it's been a it's been a long process. I've well, I've probably said that about four times that we think we're in the process of buying our first house, but hopefully this is the actual first time of buying the house. Um, but yeah, we'll view it again today, and it's all moving in the right direction. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we are we'll be in before the end of the year, um, and then my setup might start to look a little bit better after that. I mean, setup setup looks fine to me. Makes no no worries. I'm literally just sat in my bedroom. I feel like I'm just like on Skype to people most of the time. <laughs> so yeah, I've I've had a day from hell today. Um, What's happened? What's happened? It sounds like it's a shocker. I mean, first of all, I was stranded in Derby, and you know, there's definitely better places in the world to be <laughs> um, than that. Um, so I had to have my, my car had to have an MOT, and it's part of a service plan. So got to take it to a Volkswagen specialist. The one in Leicester is fully booked, and I went to Uni in Derby, so it's like it's. I know the city reasonably well. Um, got there at eight o'clock in the morning, thinking you know, booking the early slot, it'll be all willing, all good. Um, thought I'll go for a little explore. So I did. And then didn't get any contact till like lunchtime, rang them at lunchtime and was like, what's going on? They were like, I haven't even seen the car yet. Ended up having to spend like a small fortune getting the car <laughs> sorted on what was wrong with it. So there was already that. And then in the end, on a, on probably the nicest day, warmest day we've had in yeah. weeks, months even. Um, actually, let's, let's have a quick look. In terms of my exploration of a city I know reasonably well, I ended up walking a grand total of nearly 14 miles wow that is a, and then that's a good shift <laughs> my, met my mate met my mate at a pub um when he finished work uh um just ended up having a bit of a catch-up and then went into town played a bit of, met, played this really cool thing right and this is very off tangent but first time i've ever done it and it was like have you ever played top golf before uh no but i'm aware of it yeah. it's like top golf but with darts in like we went to oh, sports bar I've, seen that. I've seen that yeah I'm so good. I'm rubbish at darts, but suddenly with this format, with all the different games, I was actually good. Like my mate, like, I mean, I don't, I'm not to dig my mate out too much. I won't name him, but he's not particularly good either. But suddenly with all these different types, like it was, it was really good. Um, I lost the actual proper game of darts that we had. So that kind of sums it up. But um, <laughs> in the games, it was good. So, you know, pros and cons today, but generally just being stranded in Derby is not what you want on a Thursday. Um, Speaking of things that you don't want, opening day defeats where you're 4-0 down at half-time, Luke, are not particularly where you want to be, at, even at this stage of the season, to be in essentially crisis mode. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I've been so positive over the last few years about QPR. The last two seasons, I've gone into it on... It was such a, like, I've just, I, I'd expected playoffs or I've been believing in playoffs and reason to as well. But this season, it's just... Everyone was so negative going into it and you just try holding on for a glimmer of hope. And for that tiny, tiny glimmer of hope to be gone after 35 seconds, it's just, it's, I just, because I, 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 me and Ben and Craig, another mate from, from the Corridor pod, um, 
went to Huddersfield, uh, went to Plymouth to watch Huddersfield. Um, because mm. one of our mates is a Huddersfield fan, and just have like the, my phone buzz for kickoff and then buzz again. And I just <laughs> look, I'm, I looked at it and like disbelief, and but mm. but I disbelief, but like I was just like, yeah, that that does make sense. Like it mm. just it, everything's just kind of the signings, Ainsworth, just everything that comes out of his mouth. I just He'd never. It's the second he stepped into the door, and I'm probably going to end up going off on a rant, and probably the first of many on this podcast. Um, the second he stepped in the door, there was just he was straight away looking over our shoulders, and in a time mm. that I wasn't looking over my shoulder, I wasn't. Mm. I was. We were mid table, and we were kind of in a bit of free for all. But his he put the mentality that we were in a relegation battle before we were even in one, and then yeah. this season throughout the win we've got no money and that's fair enough that's not his fault but we've got decent players there and the signings we've made a kind of old experienced heads and you kind of know where he's taking it but I don't like where he's taking it and the, it's just it's very hard to look for the positives and I, I don't think that's a great Watford side I don't think that's a Watford side and we'll talk about the Carabao Cup later that kind of mm. that was a Watford side that made one change for the game against Stevenage I think it was and lost yeah. um so yeah, I, I think I think Watford will finish probably mid table and we've just made them look unbelievable. Mm. Um second half we looked a little bit better, but against a side that was four nil up at half time and though they had the game j- wrapped up. So yeah, not not a lot to uh write home about in, in the first game. Your your guys slightly slightly better, I guess. I I mean I just wanted before before we move to Leicester. I just wanted to. I know you don't want to talk about QPR the whole time, but I just wanted to say, like, you said you weren't worried going into the game. How worried are you now, or do you think it's just like it's first game? First game often throws up some mad results. Like, do you think it is panic well, stations I, already? Or is, right is now, it? I I predicted us as a spoiler to finish twenty. What, what's the first place above the red game? Twenty first. Twenty first. Yeah. So. And that's, and I was saying this in the podcast we did yesterday, if you're a fan of a club and you predict your club to finish one place outside the bottom three, it's because you can't heart, you haven't got the heart to put them in the bottom three. Mm. Mm. So I'm, I would imagine we're playing League One football and it terrifies me because it's, it's such a tough league to get out of. And I just mm. don't see, I don't see Ainsworth getting out of it. No matter that we've made some okay signings again, like those experienced heads, like the Steve Cook, the Jack Cole back, the Begovic who managed to get in the team of the week. That's how bad we, we lost four 0 on Begovic. Didn't he make like league. nine saves? He made like yeah. nine saves from it, didn't he? Stupid like that, which is so. Yeah, there's. It's annoying because it's, it's the squad's not too dissimilar for what I was really excited about under Warburton and under Beale. Mm. So that's like I just can't get my head around how everyone's confidence is on the floor. We've got this new training ground, which everyone should be buzzing about. And then there's just like, it just feels like we're just, I don't even know what it's just like, there's nothing, there's nothing to be excited about, but there should be. Yeah. That's the frustrating thing. I feel like there should be. See, I, I, I mean, I've, I've put these on record already so I can say it, Um, but I, I didn't have you to go down. I think you were in my, kind of thoughts about one of the three teams that would go down. But I think what will happen is Ainsworth will probably be the first one sacked, I think, in the Championship. I mean, less in terms of sacked, I think the other managers might get poached maybe, but I think Ainsworth will be the first one sacked. I also think, and I mean, shout, like, tell me I'm wrong here. Like, I think Warnock and Huddersfield, they're struggling a little bit. I think that magic will wear off fairly quickly. And I could see maybe like a Warnock going back to QPR, yeah. keeping you up a bit like what he did with Huddersfield last year. There's like, maybe not Warnock, but somebody like that. Because um, like you said, there is still quality in your team. That's that's the the baffling thing. Like, there is still some quality there. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the one more thing on, on Ainsworth, the problem that will, will force us to keep him for longer than we want to and, and maybe lead us to, to going down in the end is... He, we gave him a three and a half year deal mm. and we're not in the financial position really that we can just pay him off that. Yeah. Um, so he, he's still got three years on his contract, which is outrageous considering mm. we got Critchley in for 10 odd games and had to pay him off a deal as well. Like <laughs> we didn't learn our lesson at all. Yeah. Um, so it just, it's just a bit of a mess from top to bottom at the moment. 
Chair and Willock are like the two players that last season we could have sold for big money and this season might have to sell them to fund something else or just to keep to keep FFP off our backs. But that their values just dropped completely. Mm. Willock's got a year left on his deal and hasn't played well since the first well, since Beal left. Um, and Chair's a solid player. I think you were interested at one point or another and is a decent championship player. Uh, well, a very good championship player, should I say. But I don't... He's never going to bring in more than five million, probably. Mm. Um, and, yeah, it's just... It's weird. The players that you want to be excited about, they, they're just not performing. And I... I want Amon to have to succeed, but what he does, and and since he's come in, there's nothing to suggest that he will. Yeah, no, I, I can appreciate that. Like I I watched some of his sort of interviews and things that he did after the game, and it was very like, "Woe is me, things are going wrong." I, I don't like. It wasn't any like. It didn't really seem very hopeful from what he was saying. It was almost like he he's resigned to fate almost. Like it's, but that's not what you should be doing. You should just be going. It's first game of the season. Chalk it off to experience. We go again next week. But yeah, yeah it, it, and he was sort of talking about, oh, we're playing against a team that might win the league. It's like, well, you could say that about any team you play. <laughs> like, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, so yeah, it be, be it will be really interesting to see how that plays out, and hopefully for you, it um, it goes okay. But you know, it's it, it's a long season in the championship, isn't it? Forty six. I mean, you think about last year, you were the right, fine, right at the top, and then it went yeah. the other way. So maybe you could do a, a Middlesbrough or a Forest, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, yeah, fingers crossed. And, and like, it's, it is only one game, like you said. So we may go away to Cardiff this weekend and it, things will all change. But, mm. uh, and that's like a, not, it's not a six pointer, but come the end of the season, those two teams, I think, could be down there. So it's, it will be a good test to see kind of where you're at in, in terms of the teams that will probably be in and around. Uh, even if I don't yeah. think Watford will be up there, I think they'll be clear of us. So Cardiff is kind of our level, I think. Um, so that will be interesting, um, and we'll have those new new signings in Jack Colback and and Steve Cook. So that might shore things up. We did have like we have had injuries at centre back, which obviously caused problems. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, like you say, one game. Let's uh, keep my positive hat on as much as I possibly can. I I, I, th- I think you'll be. Okay. I personally think you'll be okay. I can't. I'm not going to sit here and say that I think you'll be bad because I like I think I think ultimately in the championship it's a long season so I think that actually what happens is your quality does kind of shine through if you look at the teams that go down Reading last year like Cardiff were rubbish Reading the like Cardiff stayed up last year because Reading got the points deduction that's how it worked Red Reading were a better team than Cardiff and without the points deduction would have stayed up they had better players they had more quality Cardiff this season their transfer window I think they could Surprise a few people. Don't think I'll have them like anywhere near the top two, but maybe sort of top six potentially. Like because I think they've like if you look at it, they've got some really good experience. But we, we I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, flipping it back to our game, um, I think the most impressive thing about our result was that we weren't very good, and we still beat one of the best teams in the division. Yeah. And actually, I mean, they 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 missed some big chances, but so did we. Like I've I've um sort of been exposed this week because obviously the, the whole Leicester Twitter feed has been sort of very Coventry centric over the last sort of two weeks. And a lot of the conversation was like Coventry fans and a lot, even people like who aren't Coventry fans sort of saying that um, Coventry deserved to win the game. Like they, they were the better side. And I think looking at the game, I thought actually outside of the, the problem that Leicester still have is that we still have a lot of the players that we had last season. So the mentality is yeah. still yeah. for a lot of those players on the floor. We conceded straight after half time. We're talking within minutes, and everyone in the crowd kind of got a little bit anxious. The players that were there last year clearly got a little bit anxious. They weren't playing through the system the same way they were in the first half, and it's you, you started to get that. Oh, it's going to happen again, just like it did last season. Like we're going to we're going to lose conceded to a set piece, and not being funny, I didn't think there were set piece problems. Some of the set pieces Coventry were putting in, some of the best I've seen in a long time, like. Conceding goals to set pieces like that, I can I can deal with that. But the fact that this is the first time Leicester have come from behind to win with like a late a late winner in like the last from eighty five minutes onwards since twenty twenty one. It's against one of the best teams in in the division. It's 
against your local rivals. It's your first game back in the championship. It's a statement victory for your new manager. Like one of your, your new players, Mavadidi, heavily involved. One of your really hopeful players, one of your most key players in, in Dewsbury Hall, heavily involved. Like it's it's a really... I, I said that the, the result is the most important thing. I don't care about the performance. Just getting off to a winning start is is massive and you can worry about everything else after that. I think Coventry will be fine. I, I predicted them to finish in the top six as well. So I, I don't think either team would look at that game and think, yeah, we've got anything to be disappointed about. I think Coventry can take... They'll, they'll be disappointed they lost the game. They'll definitely be disappointed they lost the game. But I think probably a draw would have been a fair result. I'm just happy that we managed to edge it. Yeah, I think like on your your side of things, it's getting shaken off that Premier League hangover with with mm. players that are still there. Obviously, playing a big mm. part is is important. Um, Southampton again is what a similar thing. Got got a similar amount of players in the squad still, um, although a few few might still be off. But um, not the not the well. Southampton were convincing, but it, it's like a very Russell Martin performance that. It took a while for them to to finish the game off, um, mm. but it's just if you can hit the ground running and, and like yeah, like you say, shake off those those nerves that are still around the ground, which I guess you have done, um, then that will set you up nicely once you get a bit further into the season. Yeah, I mean, at times in in the second in like after we equalised and in the first half, the system looked like it was working really well, like the way that they were playing the ball into Harry Winks. And he's he's always available, even when Coventry were like on top for that half an hour. If we, we He was always available. I think Harry Winks is going to be genuinely, even if we don't end up getting promoted or in, like if we get to the playoffs, I think Harry Winks is still going to be the best, one of the best players in the division this season because he just, he is a class above. I, I, I would argue with anyone who would say he's not a Premier League player. He absolutely is. Like we, It's a huge coup for us to bring him into this division. The thing about him is, as a player, he's not really a, a goal scorer. Yeah. Like if 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 I and I'm not saying he's anywhere near as good as him before anybody like throws this back at me. You remember the great Barcelona side under under Pep? Like in the midfield, you had like the Busquets who would break things up, and then you had Xavi who sort of got all the assists. Like it kind of reminds me of sort of he kind of reminds me of like um, Xavi a little bit. He's just the pivot. Doesn't yeah, get all yeah. the goals and the assists like Iniesta did, and all the like the attacking players. He just kind of reminds me of that player who keeps things ticking over, and he's integral to the system that you play. And he probably will at, at this level pop up with goals and assists. But I mean, speaking speaking of players that I'm really excited by, I, I think Mavadidi could be brilliant. He looks like the kind of player who will frustrate me incredibly. Like there'll be times where he's like there were a couple of times. I mean, it was his debut. He'd only been at three training sessions before it. Like. There was times when he had his, his fullback one on one in the first half, and I thought, oh, just have a go at him, have a go at him. And he'd sort of clearly he was being told to play a certain way, which is fine. Second half, though, it looked like Enzo sort of said to him, like, let him off the leash a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And he he was he was really impressive. I think end product might be an issue. I think like, yes, he got an assist, but it was, I mean, not Meg the lad, and it just sort of went to Dewsbury Hall, like, but end product might be a, a little bit of an issue, but we'll see. I mean, it's his first game. Huddersfield is is definitely a a better option on Saturday to start him against, and he can maybe really have a go at his man and sort of put his stamp on things. But yeah, he he excited me. There, there were a couple of things that he did that looks really really good. Um, but yeah, I think he'll frustrate me as well. Yeah, I mean right. it, it's a nice option to have, right? And, and 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 a fresh start from them. I guess I, I saw some of your tweets that the likes of Vardy and stuff aren't aren't in the plan or, or aren't going to work in this plan are you mm. expecting them to be to be gone or just not play that bigger part this season some of those guys i think you can't get rid of vardy i think if i pick one player like vardy you can't get rid of him i think in a lot of games i'd save him for like the last 20 minutes last half yeah. an hour if you're chasing a game or you, you draw and you just throw another body on like but the one thing that in this system i think out of the strikers we've got ian Acho has to start because he, he's he's again he's an incredibly frustrating player he can come across as quite lazy and he he literally goes from the sublime to the like to, to the awful in in the space of 30 seconds so but in terms of this system holding it up bringing some of those more advanced midfielders into play i just think he, he's much better suited to it than vardy the problem is like with vardy is you can't really he's, he's such a club legend that it's it, yeah. the, the way you phase him out but i think the 
the general consensus from most fans now is that he he should just be like a bit part player. Um, I would start Iheanacho. Pers- personally, I'd have I'd have sold one of them or got rid of one of them and then brought somebody else in because all of them form wise are on the floor. Yeah. So I think a lot of the I, I don't know if all those players that I mentioned, like as I said, Vestergaard and Didi, um, like Castagna, who else was there? I think I've mentioned like McAteer on the wing, a lot who's a young lad who's come through. A lot of these players, I don't think they'll go. I just think we'll sign players who fit the system better. Like Ndidi in that attacking midfield role, he's full of energy, but he is a square peg in a round hole. Yeah. Whereas like we're we're very heavily linked with um uh, Cesare Casade from Chelsea, under twenty Italian. Like it was at Reading last season. Looked really, really good. Was brilliant in the under twenty World Cup for Italy. Maresca knows him really well. Like he, if you if you swap out Ndidi for him, Ndidi's obviously a better player historically because he's he's experienced in that role. It's it's an instant improvement because yeah. it's a better player suited to that. So I just think by the end of the window, that starting eleven will look very different. Whether it be better or not, I don't know, but it would. I just think it will look different. Um, a lot of those players won't necessarily leave, but won't be mainstays in the team. So, yeah, we'll see though. We'll see. We'll get onto that um, a little bit later on because we are going to talk about this weekend's fixtures coming up. Um, we'll very quickly talk about. I mean, you mentioned it earlier the the Carabao Cup. There was quite a, a few big shocks in the League Cup this week, so. Ones that stood out to me, Southampton went out, Hull went out, Millwall, Preston, Watford, Sunderland, Coventry all went out um, in the first round. But regardless of that, cup upsets happen all the time. My question is this. Do those teams now have an advantage over those teams that went through in terms of priority? Um, the Carabao Cup's a difficult one. I think a lot of sides make big changes, although, like I said earlier, Watford didn't. I think it's a welcome distraction for a team that's not involved in anything. And especially mm. the FA Cup later down later down the line when seasons might have already started to fizzle out a bit. Um but it's a it's, it really is a chance to just get get the confidence up early on in the season. And I, I'm definitely an advocate for just trying I, I obviously you've got to make your changes, use your squad, but I don't think personally it's an advantage to to have the slightly fewer games, mm-hmm. um, especially. Uh, I guess the the sides at the top, the the parachute, the sides of the parachute payments, and maybe the bigger squads, potentially have got a better opportunity to stay in the cup and, and not be as affected as much than the the guys that might be just sniffing in the playoffs that have maybe got an eleven uh, and maybe fourteen players that are, are going to put in a shift. Um, mm. But uh, they play so. I I I would never never discount the the confidence that a cup run could bring um the early rounds maybe feel a bit of bit irrelevant um but i still think i mean this is maybe speaking because i haven't had what much of a cup run um ever really um so maybe maybe i'm just craving one but um yeah, i don't i don't remember qpr really ever having a cup run like i've obviously in the 90s i know there was a, they spent a lot more time sort of higher up the leagues but I don't really remember a cup run ever being something that QPR have really done. No, I mean, especially in the FA Cup, I think we've got the worst third round record of any team in the third round in the FA Cup history. Which is see, I I can I can testify to that. I would rather have that though than what our record was before we won the FA Cup, and that was that we'd lost the most finals oh. <laughs> without 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 winning. Yeah, so <laughs> I think I'd rather look at guy in the third round than. Get, get be the bridesmaid, but yeah, but I, I think I think you make some good points there about the cup. Like, I think I think it's a good way to build momentum. Like if again, without being too much like too too Leicester about it, like I think for us, like last night, it was a good opportunity for Maresca to see some of the players that maybe didn't play against Coventry, see how they fit into the system, just to get some more minutes in the legs in the system. And see how it worked. Like Ian Acho started, scored a brilliant goal really early. Like Justin played in the in the sort of back three when we when we we're in possession. Chowdhury featured a lot more. Like it's it's a good opportunity to sort of maybe bed in some new new players, bed in styles. And the more games you have to do that, the better. Because really, a lot of these clubs won't go deep in the competition, will they? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, especially that these are like we're, we're one game into the season. These early rounds is is pretty much just a continuation of pre-season for those players that, like you say, have either come in a bit late or maybe haven't had the minutes. So mm. they, they're kind of just a bit of an anomaly. It's like if, if you go out, it's OK, but mm. it kind of snowballs. Like you get for you a couple of rounds and you're like, hang on a minute. We're a game away from the quarterfinal here. Mm. We're doing something. And then it, then it starts to get a bit excited. And like you say, the momentum can creep up. Um, I I, I, just, I like I like the comp- competitions and I like I, I'm an advocate for keeping the magic in them and the, and I don't want that to go and I think it it's it's so going but I, I think the FA Cup especially in recent times I think people have got to see that the magic in it and I think it is there um, I don't see it on, from a personal perspective very often but mm. um, I love a cup competition and and I think. You might as well give it a go. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you there massively. I, I think I think that like having seen Leicester win the League Cup when I was five, and then win the FA Cup when I was how old was I? Hang on, twenty six. Like it fe- obviously felt a lot more special when I was twenty six because I was like, more of a part of it, even though it was during COVID. Like, but yeah, I just you get that taste for it and like it, that's the thing like last year we went out to Blackburn which yeah that Blackburn side were all right but like we had a really good opportunity to go deep because I think they played Sheffield United in the next round yeah. and then obviously they could have we could have got to the semi-final and yes it would have been against Man City at Wembley but you know day out at Wembley there's we we beaten Man City at Wembley not last year the year before like what's the you know <laughs> there's there's always a chance on a one-off game so um Team wanted to talk about in terms of like just priorities and things. Ipswich beat Sunderland at the weekend. And I I sort of think Ipswich will have a decent season, but are they being overhyped somewhat? Because there's a few people and a few sort of big podcasts, shall we say, who've tipped them for very, very big things this season. And I think they're a good side. I think they've got good backing. Do I think that they will or do do you think that they will get to the heights that some people are predicting them to? I no, I know exactly what you're talking about with, with, with the references that you've picked, but um, I, I, yeah, I get the hype, but I do, yeah, I, I think it's a bit much. I think we might be falling into Sunderland did it last year. Ipswich yeah. did better than Sunderland in League One, so therefore they, they've got to get playoffs. Um it like I, I don't I don't think they'll be in any trouble whatsoever. I think they'll probably be around the top half. Mm. Um, but it's a decent squad. They might start quickly, but I can't. There's not, there's not really anything grabbing me to say that they'll be competing at the top. Yeah, I they they've got a decent squad and it's it's a good platform to build off. Um, but yeah, I I, I don't think that they'll be competing at the end of the season. I don't know about you. I think that, I think Ipswich are a big club. I think that they're, they're a great club with great history, some good players in their squad as well. Good manager behind them with a good, uh, with a good style. I think they could be in a sniff for the playoffs, a bit like Sunderland last year. I think they might be in and around the playoffs because momentum is, is really important in football. Yeah. I don't see them getting anywhere near the top two though. Cause I just think, if you look at the league, you've got, again, not to be too biased, Leicester, Southampton, Leeds, uh, Stoke have invested really well, started really well. Like yeah. um, Sunderland will be sort of in and around the playoffs. Coventry will be in and around the playoffs. I think Borough, if they lose to Rackbomb, as rumoured this week, would be a huge, huge blow for them. But if they keep him, that those goals are so important that they'll be there or thereabouts. This is, compared to last year, this might be one of the most competitive championships or top sixes we've ever yeah, seen. Yeah. So for them to just come into the league and fly up it like that, I think is a huge ask at a, a tall order. Do I think that they will get in and around the playoffs? Maybe. But the thing is, I, I can't sit here and say I know for sure because it's the championship. Anything could happen. They could start really well and then drop right off and actually end up going down again so I, I don't know but I I haven't got them in my top six I'll be honest um, and that's that kind of is a uh, quite a good segue because I actually wanted to talk to you um, about that <laughs> because on the podcast I did uh, last week 
I put forward my predictions for the top two, the playoffs and relegation. Now, you might disagree with me. I don't know if you listened to it. It's okay if you didn't, but I don't know if you listened to it. I said, and I'm regretting one of these already, but I did say with you and um, we were going to revisit them once the window was closed because like Southampton, for example, could lose yeah, like three yeah, of their best players. Well, and, yeah. 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 Um, but I had, in, in this is in no particular order, by the way, I actually had Southampton and Sunderland as my top two because I thought Sunderland actually looked like they've recruited really well from the continent. And like last year, they recruited lots of unknown players and did really well. I thought, oh, they've maybe done it again. They're quite exciting players. and But again, they lost to Ipswich. So kind of shooting myself in the foot after what I've just said about Ipswich. Um, top uh, playoffs, I said Leicester, Coventry, Borough and Stoke. But again, if Borough lose to Brackbon, that could change massively again. If Coventry lose Gustavo Hamer and don't replace him, could change again. Um, and then bottom three, I had the two sort of obvious ones that everybody keeps seeming to mention, which is Sheffield Wednesday and Rotherham. Yeah, But I yeah. also had a team that, again, I just kind of wanted to be different with this team. Um, but also, and I'm going to say it again, I'm also if there's any Preston fans listening, I do apologise. I had Preston in my bottom three, just because I thought there's always that one team in the Championship that doesn't really recruit much in the summer, or they don't really sign any outstanding players. They have lost quite a few of their better players to Stoke, like Daniel Jan- Daniel Johnson's gone to Stoke. He's a key player for them. They've lost some of their coaching staff as well. Some people have been there for a long time. I just think they could get pulled into it. That's not, and that's just, so I thought I'd be a bit left field with that. Um, what would you say? I mean, first of all, do you, do you think that's outlandish? Is there anything you I agree with? Disagree with? Like... Too, there's nothing too outrageous. Like the Preston, like when I was kind of building from the bottom, Preston was like the first team that I had above my kind of, so like I got the guys that I'm like pretty confident are going to be in a relegation like scrap, and then Preston yeah. was 18 for me, so the one spot above that. But absolutely, I can see them slipping into that. Um, yeah. I think there's a lot of I haven't got Huddersfield in my bottom three, but there's a lot. If if Huddersfield didn't have a God knows how old Neil Warnock in that dugout, mm. everyone would have them to go down, and at some point. That magic has, well, I mean, it doesn't have to, but I mm. imagine it will. So I have them just 20th, but my bottom three is, like you say, Rotherham and Sheffield Wednesday. Um, and then I've got Cardiff, who, which is the joy of the championship, because like you say, you, you think you, they might be up there. But I look at the signings they've made and some of them excite me a little bit. But like the, Josh Bowler is a great player at this level. Um, Aaron Ramsey, I'm not, just not convinced that that's going to work. Carlin Grant is another one that, he's disappointed me in recent times um so they like that they could finish anywhere but it, really i wanted to put qpr in there and i just had to sacrifice cardiff for that unfortunately yeah i think i think sometimes you've got to like you, you, your pride does kind of take over like i remember last summer when we were doing the premier league predictions like for when leicester were in there a lot of people were coming back with me saying oh i think leicester will be bottom half this season i think they'll be bottom half and I was like, no, no, it's us. Like, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll probably start really poorly and then end up in the bottom half and then end up getting out of there. But then actually, as the season went on, I kind of, it well, very quickly within sort of the first, after the first seven games and we had one point, I was like, oh, maybe my blue tinted spectacles are a little too blue at the moment. So, yeah, sometimes you've just got to back your team though, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, so confirm, confirm bottom three. Who was your bottom three? So confirm. from bottom to, so I have Sheffield Wednesday bottom, then Rotherham and then Cardiff. Yeah, I think most people have gone. I th- I literally, if I look at loads of people's bottom three, Sheffield Wednesday and Rotherham are pretty much yeah. dominant in there. Um, playoffs could be completely different to anyone else's. Who have you come for? Who, who do you think? Because yeah, so, I, I, I said that could be any four from 10 teams. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, it is, it is ridiculously close. Um, I've got Stoke in there. I've got West Brom in there. And I feel like that's a Carlos Corbran effect has got me there. Um, yes. And then Middlesbrough and Coventry to round it out. And, and I've got two on the edge which in Hull and Birmingham, which mm. I'm kind of hoping surprise everybody. See, I think, I think Birmingham could have quite a good season. I think they've actually recruited quite well. But the problem is, like... They bring in a big name like Tom Brady, and like, how how much do these people understand like the championship in in the sense of like do you, in the championship for when you went like if I look at Leicester's owners for example when they came in they spent loads of money because they thought it's just you know spend loads of money get out of the division 
championship doesn't work like that. And it's kind of the same with Birmingham. They haven't spent a fortune, but they have come in, spent loads of players. Are they going to demand immediate success or are they going to kind of let things build organically a little bit? Um, but I do think they could come in the top in the top six. I think they, they might be there or thereabouts because I've been quite impressed by some of the some of the uh, players that they've brought in. So who did you have in the top two? And then my top two is Southampton Leicester. So Leeds are the, the one that's not in there really for me. Yeah, I, I, I tip, I mean, before, I mean, they, they seem like they've, um, they were really close to signing Max Aarons, but there's um, potentially that he's going to go to Bournemouth instead. Yeah. yeah. So I I think that like there's a, there's a very good chance that um, like Leeds, I sort of said, could be, could maybe not even make the playoffs, but actually I thought their comeback against Cardiff at the weekend was, was very good in the end. Yeah. Um, so you are now in the um, in the pool to get shouted at when you know when people listen to this and they realise that we're underselling or overselling their teams. Um, right, I don't know what order we want to do this in because we last year Luke and I did a shirt bet, which I was very very lucky to. I was very fortunate to win in the end, yeah. um, which was a really random one and actually to be fair i bet looking back you probably regret making that bet our bet it was wasn't a ridiculous decision. decision. <laughs> <laughs> it was who, who's gonna win the Premier League title i said Luke was like I, I think i think the conte factor i think like spurs might win it and i was like all right well i think man city will win it <laughs> and if neither of us had won then nobody would have won obviously um but yeah i i kind of after i signed that i was like oh i feel I, when 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 we kind of resolve the bet i felt really bad about it because i was like <laughs> I was like, it was like after about November, I was like, oh, I might not win this. I was like, but Luke's definitely not won this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, for the majority of the season, I was looking pretty safe at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. With Arsenal top. And, but it was my fault. I was so, I don't know, I was so confident. Spurs had had an unbelievable end to the season, the mm. season before. They'd signed what I thought had been really well, mm. and they had Conte still. But, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think, I think everyone expected, Conte at Spurs to crash and burn, just not that quickly. Yeah. Because it crashes and burns everywhere that Conte goes. So it's like, I just, I just, yeah, I thought they might have a bit, I, I thought they'd have a better season than they did. I, I agreed that they would be up there, but yeah, I just thought it was a very outlandish comment. But you know, it's, it's gambling. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to like high stakes. Yeah. Um. So we talked about doing one this year as well, because I kind of, I still feel bad. And, but we, we kind of, when Leicester got relegated, I put forward the, oh, who's going to finish higher or Leicester or QPR? And again, it kind of felt like a, now it kind of feels like a Man City Spurs <laughs> situation. <laughs> yeah, I'd take the Spurs very, very happily. But I, I did come up with a different idea, which was, we both say the genuinely honest position that we think our team is going to finish this season, like our realistic expectation, not our, like, hopeful not our pessimistic our genuinely realistic position the team that comes closer to that position or the person who who guesses closest to the position wins so if i said i think leicester are going to come top and they come fourth that's three positions but if luke says they're going to finish 21st and they finish 22nd he would win because his his guess was was closer. I don't know if you you agree with that, Luke. No, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think we're, we'll both be in a similar position, as in you'll be competing within those top six positions and we'll be competing mm. with the bottom six positions. So, mm. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with okay. that. Uh, we'll start with you then. What what do you think your... I'm going to write this down, so I've actually got it on here. What do you think your honest, like genuinely realistic position is? Because like, obviously you said 21st in your prediction was like your kind of into yeah. my club. I hope they'll finish there, but you don't know. Where do you think they honestly will finish? It's very tough. 21st is still what's going to my... Like, it's the Ainsworth factor, mm. but I can't see what... I'm fairly confident there will be a next mm. factor of the season. Um, So I, I'm going to hope that we go quickly and I'll, I'll stick with 21st. I'll stick with 21st. I think... Mm. If we get rid of Ainsworth, and we will get rid of Ainsworth, it's just when. Um, but I'm hoping we survive. I haven't watched Huddersfield at the weekend as well. In yeah. a very windy Plymouth, we can't really take much from that game. But yeah, I'm going to stay. I'm going to go with 21st. What about yourself? Okay. See, I am torn because I think that 
I mean, after watching Southampton, Southampton looked very, very good. But then how many of those players are still going to be there come September? Same with us. Like We might lose one or two players come September as well. We might also sign a couple of players. So, like, I kind of said, like, Leicester in the playoffs, and I do still think that that might happen because Leeds might recruit really well. There's always one sort of championship team who end up, like, flying the league like, and doing really well. It's not always just the three teams that come down despite parachute payments. Yeah. I think I kind of this is the problem though. I kind of if I if I say what I really think, then I limit myself either side. But I'm gonna go with it. I think nobody wants to finish here. Nobody wants to finish here, but I think we are going to come second. I I, I, I agree. I, I agree with that prediction. I uh, yeah, I mean no, nobody wants to come second. You'd either go up with the trophy or go up through the playoffs. playoffs. Yeah, yeah, but I, you know, I take it's back to the Premier League. I take it, but uh, I, <laughs> beggars can't be choosers. But um, yeah, I think second. So yeah, whoever fin- whoever's team finishes closest to those two predictions uh, will win. If we tie, then it is null and void. We go again next season. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And yeah. same same rules apply to the to the winner and loser as a guest last season, right? Yes. So thirty pound limit on the shirt, and the winner the winner chooses the shirt for the person to buy for them. Yeah. Because like we said, we could have ended up stitching it up and being like, "Oh, I'd spend thirty quid on a shirt that you'll never wear again." Whereas actually, that that shirt might be a lucky shirt. I wore it on Sunday and we won. So there you go. It might it You're might welcome. have to be my, it might have to be a uh, a regular at home game. So, but right. Hang on, hang on a minute. What is what is that I hear on the horizon? It could have been killed. Uh, it could have been killed. Uh, That's right. It's time for Fergie time. Um, Luke, I don't know if you're familiar I... with the new game that we've introduced, um, but our new game, Fergie time, I'm going to give you a topic. Uh, you will have 30 seconds. That's where the Fergie time bit comes in. To name as many football players as you can around this topic. In front of me, I have got... The top 25 championship goal scorers of all time since 2000, because that's kind of in our in our ballpark. How many of those do you think you can name in 30 seconds? Gosh. 30 seconds is not a lot of time. It, it isn't. It's surprisingly a short amount of time. I feel like if I set myself... I'll go for 10. 10. Okay. That's a, that's a fair... That's a fair number. Um, are Are you ready? Would you? I've got the names in front of me. I've got them. I've got. I've been scrolling, sc- scrolling them down. As I can't see it, can you? I've been scrolling them down as we've been going. I've got twenty five in front of me. How many do you think you can name? You said ten. You ready? Yeah. Okay. You are waiting for this sound. When you hear this sound, and I might need to go and get my watch actually, because that's probably a better time than what I've got in front of me. Because I'm making noise. You're waiting for this sound at the end of thirty seconds. It could have been killed. Uh, so let me just go and quickly get my watch because that's a better time. One of these days, you might actually think I'd be prepared for one of these games. I wasn't last week either. So, uh, right, 30 seconds to name. The top, as many championship strikers, uh, top goal scorers as you can out of top 25. You said you could name 10. If you beat 10, you win. If you fail, then you fail, obviously. Right. (laughs) You ready? Three, two, one. Go. Right. Billy Sharp, Ross McCormack, uh, Charlie Austin, Alexandra Mitrovic, Dwight Gale, who am I missing? I'm already panicking. Troy Deeney, Ivan Tony, maybe. Uh, oh, God. This is well harder than I thought it was going to be. Oh, I've already got stuck. Jordan Rhodes. It could have been killed. Uh- oh, no. <laughs> I've lost it. I'm panicking. Got- it's well harder than you think it would be. It's the pressure of the time limit, isn't it? <laughs> you got one, two, three, four, five, 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Only six. Only six. Who were the, who were the two that I said that weren't on there? Tony, maybe. Uh, Tony's not. I don't think he played in there long enough to get, yeah. uh, even though he scored a, a hatful when he was here. I don't think he played long enough. And Dwight Gale's not on there either. Really? Hmm. Might be, maybe they'll be just outside the top 25. Um, but you did say Billy Sharp, Jordan Rhodes, Ross McCormack, Troy Deeney, Charlie Austin, and Alexander Mitrovic. So you got those ones right. You oh, could have had, and this is in order from top to top to 25th, so first to 25th, and I'll include the ones that you said. You could have had Billy Sharp, Marlon King, Jordan Rhodes, David Nugent, Ross McCormack, Chris Martin, oh, Lewis Graben, hmm, Lewis Graben, Andy Gray, Clinton Morrison, Troy Deeney, Lucas Jukovic, Nak- Naki Wells, Daryl Murphy, Darius Henderson, Tom Ince, David Connolly, Charlie Austin, Robbie Blake, Rob Earnshaw, Marlon Harewood, Haider Helgerson, Tommy Smith, Mitrovic, Richard Cresswell, and Dexter Blackstock. Oh, I should have had a few of them. Should have had a few of them. Yeah, to be fair, I, when, you, when you started listing off all those names to start off with, I thought, you're absolutely in the right ballpark. I was thinking, like, Nugent was going to be there, grabbing, like, all, like Tom Ince, because they were just... But I think there's... There's a lot of very there's a lot of recency bias in that list, but there's also some very yeah goal, just, uh, incredible goal scorers who are also forgettable. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean. Martin I mean that certainly forget, yeah. forgettable. Darius Henderson, like nah, Robbie Blake. Disappointed with myself. I'll be back. I'll be back. Yeah, I mean, I I should have I I'd have, I probably wouldn't have got Richard Cresswell, but I should have done because he played for Leicester. Um, yeah, so Fergie time. <laughs> that is, you know, our new game. We're going to try and introduce that where we can. It's always better when there's um, no offense. There's always it's always better when there's two guests because you can kind of play off against each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also it's unfair if I play it because I have the list in front of me. <laughs> yeah. um, right. So this weekend you obviously got championship fixtures coming up. I want to start, and it's very self indulgent of me. I want to start with Huddersfield v Leicester because you went to watch Huddersfield on Saturday, and I want to know a little bit about them because I saw a tweet from a Huddersfield account that we follow on our Twitter account who said that they lost 3-2 to Borough. I thought, oh, that looks like a good result, like well, a good performance on paper, and their assessment was that it flattered them massively. Were they rubbish on Saturday, or were Plymouth very good? Um, it's. I think Huddersfield were the better side probably for the... For, well, so, so the, the, first of all, it was the windiest game of football I've ever been to. So, it's very open at Home Park, isn't it? Because like yeah. one stand's not connected, so it's and it was like so. It was an unbelievably windy day. So the goal kicks were being flung to the halfway line, and then they were dropping straight back down on the goalkeeper's eighteen-yard mm-hmm. box. So there's not really a lot you can take from the, like the style of how they were playing, but really from. Put, Plymouth scored early because I think because of the wind, there was a terrible mix up between the keeper and the and the centre back. Um and they said that, that was dodgy and they couldn't handle Bally Mumba for the whole game. That front three for Plymouth is going to be what keeps them safe because all of them are pretty decent players. Yeah. Um so that they'll I think they'll be fine. But Huddersfield kind of settled into it through until in about halfway through the first half and were on top and deserved to score and go in level. And then the start of the second half, up until about 60 minutes, were the better side by far and, and were keeping the ball much better than you might expect them to. Um, and just looked like a solid side. But there was a few... It was a, Mistakes caused the goals. I think they, they gave the mm. ball away for two of them and then it was a mishap for the for the first one. It was it was a solid Huddersfield performance. And if Huddersfield had walked away with a 1-0 win, I don't think you could have any complaints. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it will be an easy game, uh, especially first home game for Huddersfield. I think Warnock is has got the the makings of a squad that he likes. They're another team that needs names, just like us. Mm. Um, but they were be- they were better than the scoreline suggested, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing, isn't it? I think for them, that was an w- interesting game because actually, you'd probably have maybe those two teams in the same part of the league come the yeah. end of the season. Um, so probably quite a statement victory for Plymouth to say we've just beaten a team who ideally we want to finish above this season. Yeah. Um, I'm quite excited for Huddersfield. I really like Huddersfield in the way day. I'm my sister lives in Morley, which is just outside of well, in, it's just outside of Leeds. It's really quick on the train, so I'm going to go stay there tomorrow night and then 
get the train over from there because it's like five pound returns so it's wonderful um but there's a two so you get to the train station there's two pubs at either end and then you walk straight down the hill to the ground brilliant day so i'm really excited for that i've also got a few sort of mates going like so i'm going to be spending the day with them in terms of the football i think i'm with you it'll be an interesting game because you've got one team that this is going to be the first test of how well can leicester break a deep lockdown yeah. if we've brought in Cassaday by then and he's, he's he's okay to play then that might make a huge difference. I think really you might have to sacrifice Ndidi in this game and play Pratt, someone who can maybe play a little bit more. We should, famous last words, kiss of death, we should win. We've got the quality to win, but will we? Big question. It's a big game. First away, it's a first away game for us. So again, another huge sort of, you know, marker to lay down. I think both teams will be up for it. Both managers will get the teams up for it. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, how do, if honest opinion, home win, away win, or draw? Yeah, I mean, it, it's silly to go against a, a Leicester win. I think. Um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting. See, like the likes of Harry Winks at this level, this is this is kind of a good test for him to see how effective he'll be because the, the the narrative around him is he's very safe. Um, it, like you say, he keeps it ticking. But when there's a, a bank of eight in front of you then go and do something um so yeah. it'll be interesting to see how he kind of like steps into that kind of game um but yeah i i would say i don't think it will be and i don't think there'll be a lot of, i think i'll go for a one nil leicester win something like that yeah i'll take that definitely as long as i see a goal i'll be happy um we're not going to go through every game because obviously there's a lot there are four fixtures i mean leicester huddersfield fair enough cardiff obviously keep obviously playing cardiff big game for you in your prediction that is big yeah. big game for you uh what do you reckon? It can't get worse. Um, so that's it can. positive. It, it can. <laughs> um, I think I was kind of watching, we were driving home from Plymouth and I was watching the Cardiff game on the way home on my phone against Leeds. And I don't think they were particularly impressive. Um, hit on the counter quite well, didn't they? got they? a couple. They hit on the counter quite well, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. Um, so if I knew so, I, I, a draw is as, as good as I can get, really. I'll go for a draw there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, away from home, you'd probably take yeah, that after. Got to win your home games. Games. That's all you got to yeah. do, really. The, the games that really stand out to me, though, there are four. Uh, and that is the lunchtime kickoff, which is Coventry Borough. Again, playoff promotion chasing teams. Birmingham Leeds, because again, we've, got, we, we've tipped Birmingham reasonably highly, and Leeds obviously being Leeds. Um, Ipswich v Stoke, because that's, I think, from, from, I think that's quite, a big game for both of those teams. Stoke really want to follow up their big win. Ipswich would love to follow up there. So both of those teams will be looking to win that. And Southampton v Norwich. Because I think, yeah. again, Norwich can't be much worse than they were last season. They're not that they were bad, but by their standards, they were poor. So that's quite a big game for them. Southampton first home game. Uh, which one would you like to talk about? Or which one do you think has got the most to talk about? I think the Ipswich um, one's really interesting. Because yeah. first home game as well, that'll be, that'll be good for them, I think. Um, mm. But... Stoke, I mean, it was against a poor Rotherham side, really, in the first mm. game. So that's C- convincing win. Though. It's a very convincing win, though, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think, I think that could be. Yeah, that is. It's an interesting one to call. It's tough to call, um, but I'm excited. Yeah, I, I wouldn't this season. Yeah, I wouldn't want to put money on it. Like, I wouldn't want to say like which one I think will come out. But I just, that's just one where, if I wasn't watching Leicester, I think I'd quite like to watch that. Yeah. Because it would also give me a chance to learn a little bit more about both of those teams. Um, like I watched a bit of Ipswich. I, I thought actually first half Ipswich were quite poor against Sunderland. Um, but second half, I thought they really came into their own. But it's, yeah, very interesting one. Because are Stoke as good as what we think? Or was it just a really poor Rotherham side? Yeah. Um, Coventry Borough is important because both teams will really want to win that game as well. Because they both got off to losing starts. They'll both want to lay down a marker. Coventry obviously at home, first game under like more stable ownership. The ground's theirs again now. I think that is a, a really big game for both because they need to build some momentum, particularly with both of both of them having arguably their most important player being linked away. Yeah. How do you see um, that one going? Yes, yeah, I feel like it might be a bit. Of, was it? Is that a repeat of the playoffs semi final? Is isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. I think and Coventry, might... Coventry, did, Coventry, fully Coventry, Middlesbrough in yeah. those playoff games, didn't they? Like that was a, both quintessential Coventry performances. 
and I, I think it might go of a sim in a similar way. I think it might not be the exciting game it, it spilled to be um, mm. with both sides, like you say, kind of with so much riding on it early on. Um, I, like you say, it's important to have the positive early to kind of give that give that sign of hope so the players might want to stay stick around a little bit. Um, uh, but I think with so it, there'll be there seems like there's too much to lose. And not enough, not enough to gain from from like giving it. I, I'm I'm saying I'm going to say an early kickoff, nil nil, a terrible, terrible game to watch. I think. Well, sorry, what an, to, exci- what, what an exciting <laughs> start to the uh, to the Saturday fixtures. Um, the other one I just we'll talk about very quickly. Um, we'll be kind of touching it already. Southampton Norwich. Um, that, that could be a really intriguing one because they both play quite exciting football. They've both got some very exciting players to watch. That that could be a goal fest, couldn't it? Which means that'll probably be no nil now I've said that. But that could be a a three two, a, like a, a, a four three. It could be a brilliant game to watch. Yeah, I'm I'm like like I said, I'm very excited. I, I really like Russell Martin. I think he's a great manager, um, and I think he'll he'll do unbelievable things this season with Southampton. Um, It'd be interesting to see who's in the squad and who's not in the squad. Um, because yeah, the, the war crowds to West Ham rumors yeah, seem to be gone. moving quite quickly. Yeah. yeah, Lavia constant it's, subjects of bids at Liverpool. So, yeah, it's the, it's the Teller one that kind of is hanging over the head of it. It's kind of you know, it's gone a bit quieter, but still hmm. feel like Burnley will probably sneak in there at some point. I mean, I think they'll reinvest, but I think if you take war Prowse, Lavia, and Teller out of that team. I think suddenly then they go from me me saying I think they might win the league to I think they'll be in the playoffs. If they then bring in players to replace them, then and I'm sure they will. Like they've they've got every chance, but I just think those three players are so key. If you take those players out, yeah, it'd be the same as taking Jewsbury Hall, Ian Acho, and you know, you know, like Winks out of our team. It's like three really really important players. So we'll very quickly run through each fixtures. I just want you to quick fire. Home or away? You've already said Coventry Borough draw. Birmingham leads. Uh, home win. Birmingham win. He said Cardiff QPR. You hope draw as well. Huddersfield Leicester. You said Leicester win. Hull Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, home win. Okay. Ipswich Stoke. We didn't actually say which way we thought that would go. Uh, away win. Okay. Millwall v Bristol City. Ooh, home win. Preston v Sunderland. Uh, away win. Rotherham Blackburn. Um, I'll go for a draw there. I was going to say I thought that draw written all over it. <laughs> Southampton Norwich. Home oh, win probably. Go for home win, yeah. Yeah. Watford Plymouth. That's that's an interesting one. I think away win. Big claim. Back to back victories for Plymouth. Yeah. Um, and then finally. Uh, West Brom v Swansea. That's a tough one. Uh, I'll go for a bounce back for West Brom home win. Fair enough. Yeah, we'll see how that plays out. Obviously, not doing anything with those. Just like to, you know, say things and hopefully people listen and they get outraged about it because it's all about the clicks. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, so really, I mean, perfect timing, really. 58 minutes on the clock. Um, about the average length of time of a championship game last season. Um Thank you so much for, for joining us, Luke. How how was your debut? How did you find it being on here? I, I've really enjoyed it. I, I'm really looking forward to uh, coming on with you more often over the season. Um, looking to improve my scores in Fergie time over the course of it. That's uh, a disappointing performance from me, much like Queen's Park Rangers on the opening day. But the only way is up from there, surely. If it, made you, if it makes you feel better, um, the only other two people I play with both failed as well. So you are... Not the, first the expectation low is the aim for, is the plan for next time. I thought that one would be quite good. I thought that'd be quite quite a, an easy one, but clearly I was wrong. But then it's the pressure of thirty seconds, isn't it? Um, right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for tuning in and listening to Fours Ninety Two once again. We will be back uh, with two episodes next week. Obviously, one with myself and Ewan, where we'll be talking sort of Premier League, European football, and then I'll be back with Luke later in the week to talk uh, Championship all over again. Uh, we are going to try and delve into some League One and League 2 stuff as well, um, where we can. Obviously, right now, though, our focus is just championship because it is. Um, no real reason for that. But we will be delving into that as much as we can. 
please make sure that you are also checking out our charity of the month, which is Mind for, of, for any of the likes that we get on here. We will be donating a share of like our own money to those charities based on your engagement with these videos. So please make sure you are checking that out as well. Uh, and we'll be back next week. Thank you very much for listening. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Give us a five star rating on Spotify uh, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. -bye.